Femi, I'd like to talk about SEO budgeting in a bit of detail um, from the perspective of a business owner or, or a commercial director who's not necessarily focused on marketing alone. Okay. Can you um, tell me how SEO compares to other marketing channels in terms of its effectiveness? Why is it important to, to even consider SEO as part of the marketing mix? SEO is a long-term strategy. So it's good for a business leader, an e-commerce owner, or a Shopify store owner to understand that it's an investment for the long term. There is actually no quick wins in some scenarios. But for bigger brands, more established brands, websites with strong authority and domain, then SEO should be something you consider to have immediate impact because you have that equity, that brand recognition. Your, your domain is quite strong. But for smaller brands, you need to understand that you have two options. You can either get traffic quick, fast, through paid Google Ads, uh, paid advertising, with high intent and get them to your website and you get your profit margins. If you're relying on SEO, then it's a really, really long game because there's not a lot of real estate space within Google to accommodate SEO. And Google as an organization over the years has kind of pushed the ranking of SEO where you have different elements above the number one of SEO, so number one ranking for SEO on Google search. So you need to understand that you need SEO because it's very cost effective, but you also need to understand that it's a long game and you should be realistic with what you expect from it. But that doesn't give you a reason to ignore it either. So you've mentioned cost effectiveness. Can you talk a little bit about what factors determine the cost of SEO? So what are the, the things that need to be considered? And is there a minimum budget that would make an SEO campaign effective? For SEO, you need to approach SEO from two perspectives. A website is technical. You have some issues that might be preventing Google from accessing elements of your website in order for it to read and interpret your website. So that the budget for that is something you can do as a one-off. So most um, SEO consultants and agency call it an SEO audit, a technical SEO audit. You don't have to do that continuously. So you just budget for that once. And then you have things that you do continuously, which is like the digital PR and link building where you really need to kind of prioritize what website is pointing links at you. So those are the two buckets. And one thing I want to highlight is content for SEO is different to content for conversion optimization. It's also different to content in other, what you want to achieve. So you need to kind of balance everything up because the content for SEO will be different to the content for paid search. People that are coming from paid search have high intent. People that are coming from SEO, in some instances, will need some bit of education. So that's where the problem starts arising when it comes to SEO, where you have SEO teams not in alignment with conversion optimization teams. So that part, what I'm trying to say primarily is you need to invest in content and those content needs to play different roles on your website. You do not want to just design your website primarily for Google because there'll be other people that would hear about your brand through word of mouth marketing. And when they land on your website, your content is sounding more like a, a robotic content. It's not human. It's more like a content AI is written, but you need to balance it up, yeah. So how do you balance then spending on SEO versus spending on paid advertising or as you mentioned, content for other? Channels yes, that's a, that's a good question. When it comes to balancing your budget, you look at where you pick your battles, where you know you can win, you can focus your SEO effort on that. The part where you know you cannot win when it comes to organic search, you can augment that with paid advertising. So your paid advertising budget and your SEO budget needs to work hand in hand. They need to communicate where your web, your your landing page or whatever term you're ranking really high for. You don't want to pump as much money 
on that for paid advertising. But again, this is on a case by case basis. In some instances, it's advisable to be bidding for something that you're also ranking very high for. So it depends on, again, your revenue targets, your profit margins that you're trying to target. So it's not a one size fits all. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about SEO tools. Do SEO agencies do use different tools than in-house teams? And which SEO tools are worth investing in? Uh, I'm going to avoid mentioning um, SEO tools that you should use. There are quite a few that are out there. But what I would like to highlight is you need your own tool to help you. But depending on the size of your organization, you need to make that decision. Do you want a cost effective approach where you work with an agency where they have an enterprise plan with all those tools and they can then help you audit your website so you don't need to incur that high cost. But if your website is large enough, your profit margin is large enough, you can. I recently worked with an organization where they they should have their own in-house SEO tool and I recommended investing in their own in-house tool. The tool that they bought was for like two years and it was about 14, 15,000 pounds, but that would do serve them for two years. But what I'm trying to highlight is the other option is you can hire an agency like ours and we will cover that cost of the tool as part of the, the, the agency fee and the, the setup fee. So there are quite a few tools out there. If your website is local, like one country specific or international, then you have to look at different tools that work for you. The tools you need to consider are tools for the technical audit and the tools for the content, but you also need to understand the limitation of those SEO tools. What you want to focus on is understanding your target audience, understanding their language, understanding what information they need before they make a purchase decision and make sure that your website and your landing pages are in the conversation when those people are making those journey across the internet before they make that purchase decision. You want to be in the consideration bucket because they're not just going to look at one brand or one website to buy from. So you need to be in the conversation. As an entrepreneur and uh, a business owner, you talk about metrics a lot. And obviously yeah. that's a big part of assessing how well a business is doing. In terms yeah. of SEO, what are the key SEO metrics to track and what deliver deliverables um, can be expected? In the real world scenario, purchase journey is not linear. We need to understand that. So some purchase patterns from customers will come from paid as a starting point. They will then interact with SEO. Some will start with SEO, interact with paid. Some will find you through social and then line straight or go back. So it's not straightforward. So you need to understand that your SEO metric will impact other metrics because they all the other channels, they all work hand in hand. But ultimately your main goal is profit. Your main goal is revenue. What I like to highlight to clients is ignore the analytics noise. Sometimes the analytics can be all green and then the profit is terrible. So just focus on that money in the bank. That's your metric. If the money, the profit is coming in, that is what metric you want to focus on. And as I mentioned earlier on, SEO is a long-term strategic um, play. You need to be, um, you need to manage your expectations. But the question then is, should you invest in it? Some people make that assumption that, oh, we're in page three, we can never rank for SEO, so we're not gonna invest in it. SEO is a bit like, I know it's a touchy subject, SEO is a bit like weight loss. You don't get results immediately. You, you, you It's a slow process. It's a little bit like fitness or living healthy or whatever aspiration you start from somewhere and you eventually get consistency. consistency and then you get the results. So, yeah. So what I, what I would like to highlight is your SEO budgeting should be 
revenue and profit focus and it should be a long-term play and you should be able to your seo should help other channels it should work you need to see my name is femi connect with me if you have any questions or if you want to create an seo budget and you need uh, a second opinion an expert opinion about that uh, i'll be happy to help with you we help you connect with me on linkedin thank you